Welcome, Chris. Thank you very, very much for coming on the podcast. Really appreciate uh, you. your time. Yeah, I'm ha happy to be here. So, uh, for people who might not know who you are, do you mind just explaining who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, my name's Chris. I play a character named John, who is the manager in Villain Support. So if you've seen Villain Support on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, uh, that's typically me, or it's Levi, who's my my, my co-creator. Um, I play the angry guy. He yells at people a lot, and I also play Napa occasionally. Napa is currently shelved because of the 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 strike going on in Hollywood, uh, just to avoid potentially or accidentally promoting something that he might be part of. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, I've been doing this for two two years and four months now. And uh, what started out as an idea that I had for one video has turned into almost a half million followers. That's insane. That's so cool. Um, and and I, I watch your videos and that's where, where I uh, found your content, but it's, it's so much fun and it's, it's such a smart idea. What, what gave you the idea to start something like villain support hotline? So I, I thought about um, when when the Death Star explodes, I thought about all the people that the contractors and everyone else that must have been on on there, all the, all the companies that had investments, uh, civilian contractors, banks, insurance companies, et cetera. And I thought it'd be funny to deny the insurance on it because uh, you know that th there had been a a uh, um, an optional product that would cover that exhaust port that they didn't purchase because they were cheap <laughs> and just, and just denying it. And I'm like, this is the idea I have. I need to get out of my head and I just want to get it recorded. And I figured I'd do that. I recorded it, put it on TikTok, And then I didn't go back on TikTok for three days. And then three days later I logged in and I had thousands of notifications to 2,500 followers and people begging me to do more. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. And you've got the voice for it as well. I'm, have you, are you a voice, voice actor? I'm not. It's not something I've ever considered until many other people have told me also that I should consider doing it. Heck yeah. I'd love to hear in a, in a, uh, in an anime or, or in any, in anything really, that'd be, that'd be incredible. Um, what, what's, what's been your favorite series to, or your, do you have a couple of favorite videos that stand out or fun videos that you really enjoy? Oh, uh, mine. Um, uh, oh, there's been so many. <laughs> I, what I've really enjoyed that there was one that I did that I think is, is my favorite. It didn't do super well, but it's my favorite one is when I, I had um, an, an unnamed vampire Lord called me saying that he wanted to knock his castle to the ground and rebuild it because somebody had put a, uh, a blessed crew, uh, a blessed cross in the, in the, the, what was the word the in, in the aquifer. So no one could take showers and all the vampires smelled really bad. And he wanted to just knock the whole castle down and rebuild it. And I'm like, we just need to get someone who's not vampiric to go in and get the cross, drain it and refill it. And you're going to be fine. And like trying to talk this guy down off the ledge. Um, I think that it, it's those kind of videos. I mean, I've really enjoyed doing videos with established characters, but the ones where it's just like a random idea that I have, those are the ones, honestly, that I've had the most fun with. That's so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, no, I've, I've, um, I, I, I'm a big Dragon Ball Z fan, and and hearing those, you know, you, especially the recent ones of you talking to Freezer and and Zarbon and and them, and, and just <laughs> it's it's really really uh, really good. Yeah. Well, what's your what's your um, vision for villain support? You've got merch. Do what? Do what's your yep. yeah? What do you see happening? So, um, I w eventually we'd like to turn this into a full blown production house. Um, be, I, I, I have a vision for an episodic series uh, in a similar vein of like Parks and Recreation or The Office, focused on the office characters, not on who they're talking to, but just the interactions in the office with, with the struggles they're having with heroes and villains as a background humor piece, but really focused on, you know, who are these characters, how do they interact, and what's funny about it. Um, that that um i mean if that could ever turn into like an actual like series that would be amazing 
I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Um, but you know, it's something that as, as, as we proof of concept, a very low budget pilot, that might be something we try to shop around at some point after the fact. That is so exciting. That is so exciting. So time frame, you know, a year or two years, or just whenever you can, you, you're working on it actively. Um, I mean, I, I, I took 44 this year. I would love for that to be what I'm doing full time by the time I'm 50. Cool. I don't know if that's a reasonable time frame. I don't know if that's way too long or way too short. Um, We'll find out if and when it happens. Yeah. Like you said, you just keep tracking along, keep putting out really cool content and um, yep. and see what happens now for, I'm, I'm, I, I don't keep up with anything other than anime and uh, you know, I'm not the greatest, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Would you, would you mind explaining what the, the writer's strike is to people who might not know what it is and, and who do you reference? So, it to? so there, there's two different strikes going on, but the writer's guild of America has been on strike for, I think the thing they went on strike in May because as, as more and more writing has gone to uh, streaming services, they're not getting residuals the same way they were because the streaming services don't share their viewership. So there's no way to say, Hey, you know, you wrote an episode of this series on, on this platform and it was, you know, and, and it was, it was watched 174 million times and you get one third of a cent for each view. Like there's no, they have no way of doing that. So um, they're, they're trying to get fair pay because they used to work. And I, I saw an interview with a writer today saying he used to work 10 to 12 months out of the year, writing episodes, working on pilots, new series. Now he works two to three months out of the year. He's really busy during those two or three months writing up full seasons of the show. And then it's purchased. And all he gets is what he was paid for the purchase of the show. And then the rest of the year, he's trying to figure out what to do. Shopping around ideas, trying to get jobs. Um, and then last, I want to say it was, was it Monday? Maybe over the weekend? I don't remember which day it was. The SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, um, went on strike against the same production companies, uh, studios that the writers are on strike against mm -hmm. because they couldn't find an agreement. There's things that they like if you were an actor and you performed on set once and they've got that footage, they want to say, we paid you for the day you were there. We now own this footage and your likeness and can use this as background footage in any movie ever. And we don't have to pay you or talking about AI because AI can, can create a, a fairly reasonable facsimile of myself or you. And if they can feed my voice pattern into it and the things that I talk about, someone could feasibly create an AI that does what I do and never have to pay it beyond what it costs to create. And so an actor who's like, I mean, and imagine Tom Cruise having his likeness taken and then they can make computer animated movies of any series he's been in and make them way more crazy because there's no stunt people to worry about. And all of a sudden, you know, you can give him random superpowers from, from a shot, like in the boys. And all of a sudden he's, you know, he's a superhero and they've just taken the series somewhere else and they never have to pay him for it because they paid for his likeness once. That actually makes a lot of sense. Um, that makes a heck of a lot of sense. And um, yeah, I, I've, I've, I listened to a recent podcast with Carla Beer, the voice of Gohan, uh, him mm -hmm. talking about AI and um, yeah, he, he, he has similar concerns and worries. So that's really good that people are taking a stand for it. That's great. Yeah. Mm. Is, is, is social media and social influencing your full-time role? I wish it is not. Uh, I work in transportation. Uh, I work for our freight brokerage. I don't know if that's a thing outside of the United States. Um, so I, I'm not sure how transportation and trucking works in New Zealand, mm. but here um, there's a lot of trucking companies that work directly with their customers, but there's a lot of smaller companies that have five, 10, 15 trucks that simply aren't big enough to get access to the huge companies that want large one-on-one -on -one relationships with, with their trucking companies. Mm -hmm. So you have freight brokerages who are like, they're, they're a third party, uh, a third party company um, who will come in and say, we work with 
75,000 trucking companies across the country with a total fleet size across all of them of, you know, 130,000 trucks. They could be anywhere at any, any given time, but we can get in on this bid, Mr. Customer, and you award us this freight and we will utilize our network of carriers to make sure your freight moves. That makes and sense. And so we're an intermediate, we're an intermediate, we're an intermediary. So the customer pays us a thousand dollars to move freight from Chicago to New York, making the rate up. And then we find a truck who will move it for 700 and we make $300 of profit. Right. Right. Okay. That's cool. That's really cool. Uh, but, but obviously it, I, I, social media sorry, is what sorry. you want to get into in the future. Like you said, you want to be a social would, media full time. I would love to be a full-time creative because I, I am a creative at heart. And this is the industry I fell into that I was able to make a good living in. Um, but I've always wanted to, to do creative stuff. Um, I do improv. Uh, I don't know. Is it called improv or impro in New Zealand? Yeah, improv, improv. Improv. Okay. They call it impro in, in Great Britain. I don't know who calls it what, where. Um, I've been doing improv off and on since 2007. Uh, I'm a member of the local troupe here uh, in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, and so that, that that's a big part of where my my content came from was wanting to improvise something. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but all of my videos are one take, except when I'm cutting back and forth between things. So I don't I, I don't write scripts. I improvise everything. Wow. I think about the idea that I have. And so it's like, I want to do a call with this villain. And what would be interesting? Okay. It'd be interesting if he was fighting this character or if he was having this problem. And then I just do a scene. And his responses are in my head and I react to what I imagine him saying. And then I, I, so, sometimes I'll get it the first take. Other times I'm sitting here for an hour doing the same thing over and over and over again, messing up 35 minutes in or 35 seconds in or recording it and being like, oh, I hate this. I'm going to redo it. And then finally getting it done and then posting it. And you're so good at it. You must be every day would be a little bit of a training for you to get better and better Absolutely. and better and better and and you would be at a point now after doing it for this long that you can you must be such a, a much better improv than you were when you started i would definitely say that my, my, my improvisation has improved dramatically the the one struggle that this causes versus practicing with real people in person is that because i get to create what is being said I don't have to worry about adjusting to what my scene partner says that might go in a different direction than I expected. So like the, the core principle of improv is yes. And mm. like I say, we're in a tornado. You don't say, no, we're not. It's a hurricane. You accept that we're in a tornado and you're adding to that concept. Mm -hmm. And so without a scene partner, I get to control all of that. That's probably the one big difference is I, I don't need to worry about someone disagreeing with me or going in a different direction because I know where it's going. That's awesome. That's so cool. That's so cool. And I, I, I'm just new to social influence. I've only been doing this for the past six months, but the podcast has taken off quite well. And I've spoken to some incredible people. I've spoken to um, the voice actor of Napa and, uh, you know, um, uh, Ash, Ash Ketchum and uh, Sunny Strait and um, a bunch of incredible Kyla Bear, a bunch of incredible voice actors, which um, I've never thought I could ever, you know, in a little town. That's awesome. Um, never thought I could ever talk to them again, but I'm learning so much from it. And pages like yours yeah. is just inspiration to so many other people out I appreciate there. That. It's, um, it's super fun. Um, and I mean, all I can say, and I'm sure you've, you've heard this outside of the social media space, and I'm sure you've heard from other people also is, is it have fun, love the people that love what you're doing and let the people who don't just roll off your back. Like, the last, the last week when we've been do, developing this brand new from scratch universe that is not involved in any existing characters, it's hard. And I've got some people being like, being like, the only reason I'm here is because you did calls with and he names a big character. I'm like, well, then you can either wait till I get back to that when the strike ends or you can leave. Like, th this is what's happening now. We've gotten a, a much more positive than negative feedback. Good. No, that's awesome. And yeah, the new universe sounds great. And and the people you work with, I've seen a few different. You said that you work with another guy. Is that a friend of yours in your town, or you meet met him online, or what? I met him online. So when I started doing villain support, um, I didn't expect it to ever get beyond 
couple thousand followers, which I very quickly have proven wrong, but a bunch of people jumped on and they're like, I want to do this. I want to make calls with you. And so we had people who popped up and they were playing the roles of the CEO, the chairman of the board, the lawyer, the guy who builds all the stuff. Um, and then Levi, who works in member solutions, which is kind of a catch all type. I uh, works with heroes and villains and anti-heroes just kind of fills in where it's needed. We never got anyone who agreed to be like hero support. Right. So that's just kind of the joke has always been that dedicated hero support people. All they do is take orders all day long for new costumes. That's all they do. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, member solutions handles the harder hero calls and I handle the villain calls. Um, and so, and then a bunch of other people have jumped on and I, I I've lost track of all of them, honestly, because of how busy I've gotten managing comments and posting on four different platforms mm. and 500,000 followers across all of them. But there's a, there's a thriving discord that we've got. And a lot of people who, who filled in other smaller roles, um, trying to figure out, you know, what, what role can they play in, in the whole Acme villain support ecosystem? Um, and so, you know, there's also this guy named Terry who, who drives a truck in real life and he plays our, our driver. Mm. So he and I used to do back and forth where I would do a call with a character trying to figure out why the delivery of something was delayed. And then I'd end the call with him like, Hey, Terry, where, what's going on? And he would do a response, uh, a duet on that call. And we'd learn his side of the call, like what's going on with it. What permit issues is he running into? Like, that's awesome. That's really cool. And then, so you see the hero support, they aren't involved because in your, in your, in your, uh, in your mind or in your world, they, um, they just taking costume sizes and, and, and that, getting costume orders. That that's what we had to turn it into because no one would step up and say, I'm doing hero stuff because I mean, my opinion is the villains are more interesting. The yeah. heroes typically always win. The villains are the ones who lose. And so the whole concept is what if villains were morons? They put on like a really, a really like tough, confident exterior. But then the minute the fight's over, they're like, what do I do now? I, I don't know what to do. Like I, I, I knocked him out. Do I, do I, do I kill him? Do I leave him there? Do I like draw on his face? What do I do? Like, like, it's just like the idea that, that they're just stupid and they can't do anything. And so they I, need constant. Violence. I love it. I love it. That's really, really smart. <laughs> and that's why I love your page, man. And and you're an anime fan, obviously. Yeah. I have I was introduced to anime. Um originally I saw um I don't remember what the channel was. There was a channel that I watched when I was like 13 years old so back in nineteen ninety-two. Uh there was a channel that played saturday morning anime mm -hmm. and they uh I, they were streaming record of lotus war do you remember that series i don't it's a really old it's so record of lotus war is based on it's it's a bunch of a bunch of guys in japan uh made their own D, &D style game system mm -hmm. played their game tracked it and then the guy made a made a manga about it and then the manga got adapted into an anime and there's there's two series now. It's old, but it, it's fun. And I, I saw that, and I was like, "What is up with with this these drawings? These are so much better than American cartoons." And um, then a couple of years later, um, Dragon Ball Z started streaming on one one of our Saturday morning cartoon stations. Not streaming, airing weekly. I had yep. to wait each week, and uh, I saw episode one, and then I missed the next two weeks. And so I saw episode four and I had no clue what was going on. Like these guys who were talking three weeks ago are now fighting and I don't know why, <laughs> but um, I got, I got into that series. And then from there I found, um, I got into Naruto and then into bleach. The big three was, was really what, what I got into. And then I, I've just, I've branched off from there. Cool. That's really cool. That's really Yeah. Anime. It's such a big part, and it is so much better than regular cartoons. Hey, I've, I've just started this new series um, on my TikTok. I'm just trying to think of something unique and different, but it's um, anime versus Disney characters. Who would win in a fight? And oh, it's, Disney characters are so strong. 
in comparison to anime characters in a lot of ways. The genie just fought Goku, and the genie from Aladdin is just, he's kick ass. You know? um, I mean, he can do anything. He can, he can do anything. He can do anything. That's, that's, I know. That, that's the struggle. Like, it's trying to figure out, like, you know, how do you power scale one universe versus another one? Mm-hmm. Like you have to go based off of what you've seen the characters do, mm-hmm. which is why I, you, I I get frustrated when people talk about like Naruto beating Goku, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't care that they're different universes with different rules. Like, can Naruto blow up a planet? No, he can't. <laughs> he can't win. No, 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 no. And and I'm I'm trying to come at it from more of like a satire approach. Like today, um, Stitch from Lilo and Stitch fought Bakugo um from my hero and uh back ago an yeah back ago just made him uh he just insulted him into tears um but <laughs> uh <laughs> but it's trying, but yeah it's a bit of fun um but yeah uh, my dragon ball z is probably probably the key is one of my favorites uh, have you met many voice actors from from anime i have not um i i i'm not I, I really have never been much of a like a convention going person mm-hmm. um, until very recently. Now, now, that now that I'm being asked to go to them, um, I, I've started going more often, but I'm not really a crowds person. Mm-hmm. I don't like concerts. I don't like sporting events. Um, I don't like being, I don't like being uh, in the middle of a mass of other human beings. And so it takes, it takes a lot of energy for me to be like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm here. I want to meet people. Cause I just want to be home alone enjoying myself um so that's that, that that's the big struggle for me but um I, I would love to meet more of them i guess for me like i would prefer to watch their work than meet them and have a conversation yeah you don't want to necessarily uh you, i mean the old saying never meet your heroes um but i've met some incredible people recently but you you are have such a big following and so much love you you'd be at a con soon signing people I'm I'm going to a convention in Roanoke, Virginia, at the end of next month, um, and then I'm also going to be going to uh, I'm going to be attending um, Fanex in Salt Lake City at the end of September, and cool. we're trying to figure out how to organize a meetup there. I just don't know who's going to be there, and I'm also trying to figure out how to organize a meetup here locally in Greenville. Um, it's weird to me. I'm just excited about making videos. And then I say, you know, I got, I got 455,000 followers. Cool. And then it occurs to me that I'm like, that's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a lot of people. And the chances that a thousand of them live within a couple hours drive of me is not unreasonable. No. So if I organize a meetup, how many people is it really going to be? Do I need to sell tickets? Like <laughs> what's going to happen? Because I so might choose there's a venue near me where like 50 people could fit. And that's what I imagine it being. And I don't want to have there be a line out the door. <laughs> that's a good point, actually. Yeah, you probably needed to. Uh, yeah, I think I think like a booking system's not a bad idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then all, like, all uh, doing some live improv. Limited spaces. limited spaces, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's challenging. That is challenging. Um, okay, well, let's... Uh, let's do i'm not much of an improv guy but i've been getting into it recently um um you said you can't do i mean i mean uh could we do a random dragon ball z improv where i start would that be uh would that be okay sure yeah yeah okay do you want me to have my headset on so it looks like i'm on the, i'm taking a call yeah give it a go yeah yeah sure okay okay all right, so I'll start it off, and it's going to be, I'm going to surprise you. I've been thinking about it while I've been talking to you. Okay, let me just see. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Hi. Hey, this is uh, Owen from Hero Support. Am I, am I talking to the right guy? Is this, is this Villain Support? Yeah, this is John Owen. What's, what, what's going on? Hey, listen. Why did you tell Cell to step on that, you know, Android Android 16's head? That, that that that's inappropriate. That's that that's unfair. And um, I I, th- I think it's, you know, kids watch this. <laughs> Sorry, no. 
that's unfair well, I mean, and appropriate and, and not just, not nice yeah you, know, you realize that i don't tell the villains to do everything right i mean cell stomped on his head of his own volition uh i mean i i didn't expect that the kid was gonna go to a new level of power as a mm-hmm. result of it mm-hmm. um but i mean ultimately like my job is to, is to help my customers succeed so i mean if stepping on stepping on android 16's head is gonna do that then that's what he should do I was in the middle of a conversation uh, with Goku and trying to order a new outfit. I was trying to change the color from orange to red. And during that okay. conversation, Gohan starts screaming. It's, it's, I just, I just felt, I just felt it was out of line. And, and I, I think I'm going to, I mean, do you have a manager? Can I, can I do a formal complaint or? Uh... That, that, that sounds like it's an issue with Gohan, not an issue with Cell. Like if Gohan is the one who's screaming, Go on. He's, 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 he's a, what? He's 12 years old. Right. I mean, he's still a kid, but like he's, he, he's got all this power. He should be, he should be aware enough of, of himself to know that he has the ability to control his responses to things. Right. He didn't have to scream. He could have yelled once. He could have just gotten mad. I mean, but you know, also think about who did he learn the screaming from? Not sell. Who else screams? His dad. Yeah. Okay. His dad's a screamer. So he's a screamer. He's just following your client. I would say talk to your client about that. That's actually not a bad point. You you're pretty good at this, actually. Is is there any uh, positions available at your company? I've just I've just had a bad day, and I I just feel like I feel like they don't treat me well here. Um, I'm just kind of whisper because my boss is right over there. But is there any positions available at the Villain Support Company? I mean, I, yeah. Maybe if you'd won the call, we could talk about that. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> That's great, man. <laughs> you good you know you you sound you sound too too good at that where it, it actually makes me nervous because i feel like i am on on a call with someone who knows what they're talking about I, so well i do apologize for taking the attitude but i did have to drop in, in yes john. Just, john is like very impatient gets irritated very easily yeah <laughs> and yeah. just is like it's like no you're wrong i'm right listen to me <laughs> it's perfect it's really really good and it and it makes i think um yeah i mean do you do you drop do you take phone calls at work do you drop into john at work is he like your alter ego I, I i have to be very careful not to um but the industry i work in lends itself to being a little bit okay with that like i don't i don't yell at people actively but in in the trucking industry here um there's a lot of negotiation going on so i might call a trucking company and be like hey i noticed you have a truck posted available in new york city and you're looking to go to southern florida i've got a load from a city in New Jersey, 20 miles from you going to Orlando, which is hundred miles North of where you want to go. Um, we'll talk about the requirements a little bit. And then, you know, I'll be like, what are you looking to get paid to do that? And the guy would be like, oh, I need $1,400. It's like, no, you know, you're, you're not getting that. You're going to get, I, I can pay 1225. And he'd be like, no, I, I got to get 13. And I'm like, dude, like the market rate is, is 1240. I can pay you that. And like, we'll just go back and forth. And it can get heated. Um, also, there's times when I'm, I'm tracking a shipment and it's like, you know, you call the company and you're like, I, I need to know where your driver's at. He's not answering his phone. And so, oh, he's in, you know, he's in, in Georgia. It's like, well, that's only 400 miles from where he left yesterday morning. He should be much further down the road. Did he break down? What's going on? Like, did it was there an issue with his hours? Did you lie to me? And you get lied to a lot, unfortunately, mm. um, because there's a lot of what's called double brokering. So I'm a, I'm a third party intermediary and I get a call from a company that I think is a trucking company saying they have a driver somewhere. In reality, they're also a third party and they're working with another trucking company. So I'm making pro so I, I'm getting paid a thousand dollars by my customer and I'm paying this guy 800 and he's paying this guy 700. And so he doesn't always know. And so it's, it's getting harder and harder to, wow. to, to catch that. So you're often having very intense conversations being like, you lied to me. I need to know where the freight is. We're going to get fined 50 bucks for late delivery. That's getting passed on to you. So the kind of way that John talks is based on the conversations and interactions I've had in this industry when things go wrong. That's so good. That's so good. That's, I mean, that's a hard comment. I, I'm not a phone guy. I don't love being on the phone. It might be just my, um, I don't know. I, I get social anxiety now and again, but you sound very, very I, good at it. I have been in this industry twice 
And the first time I quit because I could not handle the stress. Mm. I was just, I was in it for a year, year, year and a half. And I literally had panic attacks and couldn't work for a month. And it was just like, nope, not doing it. And then about three years later, I got the opportunity to go back into it. And I was like, I know what I'm getting into. I think I can handle it. And 12 years later, I've gotten very good at it. Yeah, yeah, true. If you're good at it, it makes you feel better about it all. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. That's so cool. Wow. Uh, well, I, I'm sure very soon you're gonna hand in your resignation letter to be a full time creator. Um, so that's that would be, be amazing. Yeah, uh, be but you know, fingers, fingers cannot. I can only cross my fingers so far. <laughs> and you know what? I mean, it's I, I, I don't hate it. So it's not like it's not like I'm desperate to get out of it. But like being creative and stuff, that's like my ultimate long-term dream that yeah. I never thought was an option. And so now that it's kind of within within reach, I'm like, I really want to go for that. Heck to the yeah. Well, um, where can can my listeners find find you other than um, yeah, just lay out at some some spots where they can find you. So uh, on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, I'm just at Villain Support. On Facebook, I'm at Acme Villain Support. Still, I think. Um, I'm also on Cameo. I haven't gotten any orders yet, um, but go on Cameo, search for Villain Support. And then um, my merch shop is supposed to be at villainsupport.com, but that's not working yet. So if you go to my profile on any of my social media, there is a link to the merch shop where you can get shirts, hats, et cetera, with Villain Support logos, Hero Support logos, Member Solutions logos, and a couple other like, designs we've come up with that's so cool wow you're doing so much man that's incredible oh. it's inspirational yeah we also have a youtube membership program it's either two dollars 99 cents a month or four dollars 99 cents a month um and that gets you access to just some small bonuses uh private a, a private section on, on the discord server it gets you your name uh, in the credits of all long form so three minute or longer videos um, and then we're going to be opening up the Patreon soon. Mm -hmm. um, and the goal there is to say to our fans, like, you know, you, if you go see a movie, you're spending 18, $20 to go get to, to get that ticket. Our Patreon is going to cost $3 a year or $3 a month. Yeah. So buy one movie ticket from me, the equivalent of one movie ticket from me. And if 10% of, of my followers do that, that pushes me to full time in this immediately and That's lets awesome. me really really start to really start to get those engines going and get this this rocket off the ground because right yeah, now yeah. we're still we're still sitting at the launch pad the engines are warmed up the smoke's there but there's no thrust yeah yeah no that's incredible that's so cool um they'll definitely do that and i really really appreciate your time and, so, uh, and coming on the show you're uh, you're an inspiration to to so many people and you make everyone who watches your videos smile every single day it's including me so thank you for the unexpected improv opportunity also that was fun <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get better i'm gonna get better um but yeah. i re yeah. really appreciate it and um and have a great day i'll post a teaser of this um later today and then the full podcast in a week and a half um which uh, yeah you'll see come out i'll share it to you but thank you so much brother awesome and then which platforms is that going to be on? Oh, sorry. That'll be on Spotify and anywhere else okay. you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube as well, a uh, video of YouTube awesome. too. So I'll just share share the links and I'll tag you in the Instagram as well. Um, I don't think I – I mostly follow you on TikTok, so I'll jump on Instagram too. Okay. Um, Very cool. This was great. I really appreciate you inviting me on here to chat. No worries. Thanks, Chris. Speak soon. Thank you. Yep, you too. Bye-bye.